This year we included as part of our concussion protocol the King Devic test, which we started last season. When the athletes are removed from the field with concussion symptoms, we then give them the King Devic sideline test. Basically with this test, it's all done on the iPad. Right at the game, if you see a kid take a hit, this is just a way of getting an objective measure in minutes on did they really take a hit, how bad is the hit, and are their scores down from their baseline. When we start the test, we are going to see several screens that look like this or something similar to it. It has lines with numbers. You're going to read the numbers out loud to me across like a book. Three, seven, nine, four, six. This can all be done on the sideline. Uh, with an iPad. Four, six, five, two. And really, it's an attention task. Five, four, one, eight, two, four, six, three, five, nine. When they do the King David test, we try to put them in an environment that's a little bit noisy because that's the environment they're going to be in on game day. Next. So we want the athlete to get used to that. Once you have an injury, you read the numbers again and you see if your speed's off five, right on six, the sideline. Four, three, five, two, seven. Okay, and you're done. All right, thanks. We don't put them back in the game prematurely. If they just don't have that baseline score on the King David test, our doctors are holding them out. Three, one, four, three, five. I think if we are the stewards of young men that come to our program and parents are going to entrust us with their most prized possession, their sons, that we have an obligation to make sure that we're doing things the right way. I think that's first and foremost. But I will tell you that it was tough for me as a college football coach and a father of three to see a piece on HBO. That we have no incentive as head coaches to look out for the safety, health, and welfare of student athletes. The incentives are not there to do what's in the best interest of the players. In January, Coach Gold had all the staff come into the meeting room and we watched the real sports story on concussions. All our coaches were there to watch it. I wanted to show it to our staff for a variety of reasons. The first of which was to make sure they understood the commitment that we've made, both in prevention, diagnosis, and then ultimately treatment integration, the return of the student athlete back to the field. Number two, I just want to make sure they know that this topic is not going away. This subject is not going away, and it's not just about being reactive, it's about being at the fore of this in college football, which I think we are. When it was over, Coach Golden asked me where we were at as far as our protocols and our educational athlete. And I felt really good to answer the question by saying we're ahead of the, we're ahead of the curve right now um, because of what we do here at the University of Miami. When the piece was over, one of the leading advocates for concussion safety and someone that challenged whether or not we were doing it the right way at the collegiate level, Chris Nowinski, I wrote him and I, I just wanted him to know that there are people that have open door policies, that have the right protocols, and that are trying to do it the right way. And we do have challenges. There's challenges inherent in this game, uh, but we've learned how to manage them better. What we try to do, whether it's spring ball, only going every other day, we're trying to make sure that recovery is adequate and that we're taking enough safety measures so that it doesn't uh, occur in the first place. Having a coach that's proactive uh, on the concussion front is great for me as an athletic trainer because it's easy for me to go in and communicate with him and he understands what's going on. There are always the base requirements, right, anything you do, and then there are the people that really want to be great, that are really hungry. Al's hungry. He wants to know that his players are being treated as efficiently as possible with the highest level of care, and then he wants to know what can I do to prevent these things from happening. We've had the concussion center. Uh, we have an open dialogue with them. Obviously, Dr. Kaplan and our trainer, Vinny Scavo, do a great job, and we have an open dialogue. And, and just by listening, just by reading, uh, we've came up with a lot of things. We've added more pads to our drills. We'll do more of those things against shields or on the sled. We also go to a hats practice on Monday during the season. We're in sweats and hats. I want the kids to sweat. I want them to stretch, I want them to learn something about the next opponent, correct any mistakes of the previous opponent, but we don't need to bang. Ice treatment lunch, okay, back from meetings at 2 o'clock. The real sports episode on concussions that originated in college football, we're grateful to them for the work that they're doing in this field because it's really helping us change how we think 
and how we conduct practices and how we coach. All right, carbon base. But I just want to make sure that they know that in the NCAA, there are a lot of coaches that A, care about student athletes, care about their teams, and uh, are really doing great things to make sure that we're doing things the right way for our student athletes in their future. You are done. Good job. Is that everyone?